Yo, what is up? We are back with One Piece, and I'm lying to you because we actually have a break next week. Oh, like, oh, yay! Oda did say in the author comments that the schedule was pretty brutal. That's putting it mildly. We had a break after what happened on Full uh, Lead Island. We come back today and we end off with the Straw Hats all posed up, looking studly, York on her back, already captured, begging the Gorose as if like she were Robin and the Gorose with Straw Hats, Iki Tai, I wanna live. I'm like, whoa, like King Kong, yeah. No, don't get too excited because guess what? Next week, another break. Now, to be fair, not an older break, it's a magazine break. But still. <laughs> not saying that this chapter isn't exciting on a lot of nerdy fronts. Like, <laughs> oh my god, the numbers, the mathematics, the scaling is delectable in this chapter, for sure. However, I want more, okay? I'm a one piece addict. I need more. I need this just, just. I need this in my veins. Heisenberg, Oda has to take a break. It is what it is. Again, not his choice. It's a magazine break and that does suck. So if you have not seen my one piece live stream reaction to the chapter, you know where to go on my Cole Requiem channel. Link in the box below to that channel for the chapter reaction. If you wanna see the post chapter discussion, you go on my twitch.tv channel where we kind of like nerd out for like a while with the tier three cats. And of course it kind of devolves other things and eh, all that fun stuff. You wanna go and watch the entire thing on twitch.tv. If you don't know, now you know. Anime reaction, gear five, anime reaction content on the King U son YouTube channel for that good stuff. First done on my Patreon, okay? So on YouTube coming out probably like in a few weeks, this this. But on Patreon, we are there the night of baby ladies and gentlemen. And also a revitalized k.o.l channel for all those reactions to certain YouTube videos, movie trailers, and so on and so forth as well. We're doing a lot. Damn right. This chapter of One Piece was a very interesting chapter of One Piece. Cause I thought off the rip, we'd start off on Egghead Island, see what's going on. But the entire thing is a lead up to Egghead Island. And the lead up is crazy where we see about the news about obviously Garb and company and Dadan, Dadan just can't get a break. But then we have a global catastrophe that's going on where quite literally the global, the global sea level has risen on average by approximately one, one meter. That is 3.28 feet. That is insane. And the cause of the insanity is Emu, the Gorose, and the Mother Frame, AKA Mother Flame unofficially. That is intense. That's really unbelievably super atomically intense. I'll get that soon enough. Oh, cause I've seen Oppenheimer and this chapter just like, if you watch the movie, no spoilers, but there are certain scenes where the guy's like, yeah, yeah. You Bro, got that activating, all right? Got all the neutrons and protons firing off. I was ready because this is an insane claim for the mother frame, mother flame. Hey, yo, the math would bear out apparently to something akin to like Iceland in our world being just blipped and eviscerated. And considering the heat component to it where so much water was vaporized 
when this country was wiped out. As far as I understand it, based on what the chapter's saying to me, it's like Long Beach, Miami, a bunch of coastal cities, all of a sudden now pulling the Atlantis. That's kind of radical. That, that's kind of nuts. And that's one attack by this supposed ancient weapon, in theory, of course, via the Mother Flame power, which is not even the full power of what they could do back in the day. Because as far as we know, the Vegapunks, we know, well, I think it was Shaka said in one chapter, they're trying to catch up to the power of the ancient people. So um, in the ancient times, these people were so radical. This kingdom was so gnarly, so lit that they could unironically do this kind of stuff on the regular if they so choose to. That's, mm -mm. whoa. That, so just when it comes to the numbers and the metrics, I forgot how many quadrillion tons, was it 3.2 quadrillion tons of water? That was, I forgot how much water it was exactly, but they display so much water across the entire planet. And in some ways, a cleansing. Oh, and Emu, Emu loves cleansings, absolutely. Even though they're all black, they shine like Mr. Clean because they love cleansing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's not targeted when it comes to the aftermath. The initial is, of course, target, duh. Lucia, gone, blipped. But the aftermath is like, everybody's getting screwed across the planet. Even higher elevation places. We saw little snippets of the Holy Land feeling it. We saw Wano Country feeling it. That's, that's very impressive. And, of course, obviously, this does scream and it's lobby. How it could pan out the way it did, where like the island is in the middle of the abyss and it's hanging by a small little part of landmass, probably involving a mother flame generated power source that is, well, a true mother flame genuine power source. Not what we see with Big Punk, but a genuine true one. So look, I can just geek out all damn day. But it's cool as hell, especially when we finally get our chapter, when we have uh, Vegapunk York talking to the Gorosei, the Ikitai, Ikitai, please help me. But when she talks about basically having access to what you call it, she called it a power station. And according to the scans, the kanji is fusion. It's not fission, fusion reactor. Bro, this is the stuff that happens in the center of the sun. And that's what you're gonna do now. Back then it was better it was actually better move so there's things that i think about honestly when it comes to um just a lot of the geeky stuff the theories about what i would think about when it comes to one piece terms like the grand scale sort of stuff like the end game stuff i haven't had the time to kind of sit down and do them like i wanted to but i'm gonna now we have another break i'm gonna really try and make time to get these things out for you guys because there's so much cool stuff going on potentially because when it comes to the science and the geeky and the nerdy and the sci-fi it is honestly a lot of times my bread and butter I love, I mean, listen, surprise, surprise, I did take engineering when I was in school. Another reason to enjoy Egghead Island. And we're not done because we, we have Kizaru and the lads pulling up. St. J. Garcia Saturn. Shh. Hey, how you doing, little mama? He wants no one to know that he's pulling on up. Man's trying to slide out. Slide in, what's good? Ayo hey, Seraphim, let's go. That's what he's trying to do. All right, he's trying to be sneaky, Sniper Burn Thief style. Has this Nin Nin going on. Will that work? Probably not, because Uncle Jesus is here. But they're trying to escape because they have York as a bargaining chip. But we know that an event is going to happen where it's going to be like, oh my God, whoa, unbelievable. What's it going to be? My guess is that it involves St. J catching these hands, these Nika hands. <clears throat> That's my guess. It could be more sophisticated. The theory is that maybe it involves punk records and all that information going out to the world. I'm sure. It's not as exciting, but yeah, sure. Kizaru. Scary. He's a cool dude. The fact that Sentamaru in the scanlations can call him Unk. <laughs> Bro, come on. 
Yo, TCV taking liberties. Ain't no way in hell. Ain't no way in hell the proper speaking Japanese people would officially have Sentomaru called Kizaru, a figure of high authority and older seniority, Unk. No, ain't no way in hell. Unk? It's funny, don't get me wrong. It, it, it is funny as hell. That's cap. Um, Kizaru's losing. I am willing to bet GameStop stock on this. How much? You don't have to know. I am willing to bet that Kizaru and company take the L. The company consists of vice admirals. And, man, <laughs> in the post stream discussion, we had a lot of talk about the vice admirals. Because it's hard to gauge how powerful, like, vice admirals can be. You have someone like Garb, who's a vice admiral, who's studly as hell. Then you have someone like Maynard, who got off screen by like Bartolomeo. Like the vice admirals are, are ugh. seen things like Smoker and Virgo before. We've had um, Bastille cut like a few buildings fighting against Sabo. We have Momoga is running the old Marine Ford. That's kind of cool. And then we have seen during Marine Ford and pre-time skip, Momonga, Doberman, Dalmatian, those guys fight against season white be pirate allies like season dudes but vice admirals are tricky they're very very tricky like when you think about it given the cross guild bounties what would a vice admiral bounty be is it possible that a vice admiral bounty would actually equal that of a first or second division commander someone like a queen or a king the wildfire someone like a katakuri or a smoothie someone like a Mongo. Is that possible? Hmm. Mm. Makes a think. It really, <laughs> it definitely does, man. So we have to wait and see in the future because I get the feeling that some of these vice admirals, particularly Grimace, the guy with like the 14 chins, yeah. If he's not purple, that's a shame on make, make it purple. But Doll, Grimace, Doberman, the guy next to Doberman on the top left, Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan! The guy on the far top right, a dwarf that fought against Smaug. Even Suda has a friend of hers, an old woman that's chilling with the crowd. I'm thinking that some of them may be better than you would expect, honestly. I think they have to be, like, by default, right? In theory, if, let's say, for example, it's Monkey D. Luffy versus Kizaru, 1v1. Where does that leave? Zoro, Sanji, Jinbei, Robin. Frankie, Vice Admirals. So we have to wait and see how it plays out in the future. Obviously, could be wrong, but I am looking forward to this. I just wish that it was next week, not in the two weeks. But that being said, I'm gonna see you cats on the flip side. See you, bye bye.